This is the brand new Galaxy S24, the little baby of the S24 family. Now it might look like the S23, but there are intricate changes that Samsung have undergone. And I'd like to compare it to another Android giant, the Google Pixel 8. I noticed coverage for the smaller phones are almost non-existent and I know there are people that love the smaller phone factor. So here I am helping out. Now these are two of the best Android phones on the market right now, but how do they compare to each other? Let's find out. This is not a full review, I have only had limited time with the S24, but in that period there is more that meets the eye. Design wise it looks very similar to the S23 and at this point I do not think there is going to be any design change for a while. Now the colors this year are the same across board, black, grey, violet and yellow with grey being my favourite colour of course and because it may be muted, yes, but it just looks better and feels better in my hand, which makes a lot of sense as this only weighs 167 grams. Sometimes you forget how compact these phones are, so this is a plus if you love smaller phones. It is worthy to note that the S24 and the S24 Plus have an aluminum build as opposed to titanium, which is only reserved for the S24 Ultra. The S24's form factor is almost square-like with a very flat display, and some may say this looks like the iPhones. I I don't really think so, but I do see its similarities. Now at this point, everyone is just copying everyone. The sides are the same, volume button and power button are on the right hand side, at the bottom is a USB-C port and of course with stereo speakers. Like I said, it's almost the same design as the Galaxy S23. The Pixel 8 also saw limited design changes to the Pixel 7, it still has a glossy glass back and I need Google to move away from that going forward, everything should just be soft and a matte finish. If you're coming from the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 7, I guess you will just feel right at home. The sides are aluminum from corner to corner and it weighs more than the Galaxy S24, actually 20 grams heavier than the S24. It has a USB-C port at the bottom and some of the best stereo speakers in a smaller form factor. We love to test both out to see which is best. Now who has the better design depends on you and what you prefer. Personally, they have similar design patterns with the exception of the camera and if we're going by that, then the S24 is my choice with a better design. Displays are really what makes a smartphone experience enjoyable because at the end of the day, it is what you look at every single time. Now, I believe they make or break your experience of a phone and with the S24, Samsung really did not slack in this department. It is 6.2 inches tall with a dynamic AMOLED screen, a 120Hz refresh rate and of course a vision booster just in case the screen is not bright enough which is kind of crazy when you consider the S24 is now 2600 nits of max brightness, making this one of the brightest phones in the industry. Now let's just face it, Samsung produces the best displays in the game, so this is not really a surprise. The Pixel 8 is an OLED panel with a variable refresh rate that can switch from 60 to 120 hertz, and for some reason, the Pixel 8 ships with the 120 hertz turned off, so it is very noticeable, so you need to head over to your settings and turn it on. You can also force a 120Hz all the time in your developer settings if you want to but just remember the battery life is going to be affected. So a huge upgrade to the Pixel 8's display is it now goes from 1400 nits of max brightness on the Pixel 7 to 2000 nits on the Pixel 8 and this obviously was great when it came out last year but now that the S24 has 2600 nits Google needs to do something with the Pixel 9 and the Pixel 9 Pro but only time will tell exactly what they're going to do. Nevertheless, the S24 has a better display with better brightness and an overall better experience. Now when it comes to the battery life, the S24 saw a slight increase this year making the battery a 4000 million powers. Now, which is pretty good and if we're going with how the S23 did with its battery life, then we already know we're going to get great battery life. Now that is maybe 7 to 8 hours of screen on time even with without overdoing it. And if by any chance the battery of your S24 isn't what you expected it to be, let me introduce you to today's sponsor, Charge. This is by far the best power bank that I have ever used and quite frankly, it is the best designed power bank I've ever used. It is called Shark Geek 100 and it has 25,600 million powers of battery and charges from 0 to 100 in 19 minutes with a 100 watt charging brick. So with this, I can charge my laptop, my phone, all at the same time if I'm on the go and I don't have an outlet that is close to me. Now if you're always on the move, this is definitely the power bank for you. It has a 12 month warranty if anything happens to it 
and you get a 30 day money back guarantee if you do not like the product i think you will now it is really a win-win situation so if you're interested in this hit the link in my bio right now to buy the best power bank in the world once again i'd like to thank charge for sponsoring this video hate it or love it but artificial intelligence or ai is here to stay hate it <laughs> or love it and samsung is finally moving in that direction joining google who more or less pioneered the way for everyone else because a lot of the features on the s24 have been on the pixel phones for a few years now but samsung have really found a way to differentiate themselves from google with their version of their galaxy ai which is one it is not cloud-based and two ease of use now there are a few noteworthy features like notices for example this is perfect if you take a lot of notes on the go and you want to organize them properly now just like most note-taking apps they're bland and they're boring but with notes assist you can edit the cover of your notes change the color add emojis if you want to as well as give it different interactions now within a given note you can then change the formatting so if you want a bigger header for example you can easily just do that you can also use its ai capabilities to translate the text to any of the 13 languages samsung is offering and i think this is pretty sick now there are other ai features like transcript assist which translates recorded messages or lectures into the 13 languages like i said and if that isn't enough you can then summarize the whole notes which is done in real time. They also collaborated with Google when it comes to search. So just like Google Lens, this gives information of a circled image or a highlighted image. So if you see a pair of shoes or a shirt that you like, you can easily just circle it and it gives you the answer. Unlike Google though, you can just long press the home button and the search pops out from the bottom of your screen. What Samsung really wants you to know is how great the Snapdragon Agent 3 chip is because every AI feature is done on the phone and is not cloud based. Samsung also promises up to 7 years of software updates and like I said, Google and the Pixel pioneered most of these features and promises, it is only left for Apple to join the party. With the Pixel 8, it is powered by Tensor G3 and it hasn't really gotten the best reputation in the past 3 months. The A Gen 3 chip is 100% more powerful and capable but Tensor is just, it's just well optimized for the Pixel devices and it is really what allows the AI within the phone to work. Like Magic Editor, Best Take, Audio Eraser, even giving users a VPN when nobody is doing that. Tensor does get a lot of heat, but the average consumer who really isn't bogged down by the numbers will have a great experience with the Pixel 8. Of course, with every new phone, we have to talk about the cameras, and there is literally no difference in the camera specs between the S24 and the S23. Same camera, same specs, which is probably going to give us the same picture quality. And that is kind of disappointing if I'm being honest. Now, I couldn't get any pictures because again, my time with this phone was very limited, but I have you guys covered by next week so you guys can see a side-by-side -side comparison. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, and you'll be the first to know when that video comes out. The S23 was a great compact phone. However, it did have its shortcomings. It looks like the S24 is their version of fixing these problems. However, there is no denying that the Pixel 8 is a wonderful phone. It is great in terms of its cameras, the AI features, and the price. It is $200 cheaper than the S24. But I would like to hear your thoughts on the S24. Did Samsung do a good job? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you guys for rocking with me and if you found any value in this video, subscribing and sharing is the best way to help me out. My name is KJOS and I'll catch you guys in the next one.